Hey everyone, welcome back to the Dabbler's Den. This is Chris Cottrell. Uh, and it's been a little while since I put together a video. Um, truth be told, it's it's the middle of summertime here in coastal Georgia, and I have been enjoying the long summer days, uh, gallivanting around, having just a great time. So, uh, so I hope you don't blame me for that. And speaking of gallivanting around, I got a message from our friend Antonio Zamora the other day. He's been out enjoying his time down in Mexico, uh, checking out the pyramids and just the culture in general. Uh, and so I hope he's having a great time down there doing that. Uh, but he did want to know if I had noticed or if I had paid any attention to the freak summer hailstorm that Guadalajara, Mexico had uh, just just last week. The, this is uh, late midsummer 2019 when it, when I'm recording this. Uh, this is not where he was. Uh, he was he's he's in the Yucatan Peninsula. Uh, Guadalajara is more central Mexico. Uh, but they did have a freak storm, and he brought up the point that. This is a great modern analog of what the conditions would have been like after a younger Dryas impact into Saginaw Bay uh, and the Laurentide Ice Sheet that would have just completely blanketed the, the central and eastern portion of the United States with crushed ice. And uh, so we want to go ahead and uh, we want to go ahead and put together something so that, uh, you know, to kind of tie this together and um, and let you guys, you know, see a modern example of what you know, the entire, uh, a very, a very large portion of North America would have been like after a YD event. Uh, before I get there, I do want to bring up that I had a wonderful conversation uh, last week with uh, Mike and Maurice uh, from, from their podcast, Mind Escape. Um, you can click the link above and hear that, you know, we talked for about an hour and a half on ca everything Carolina Bays and YD Impact. And, uh, and uh, so there's a lot of good um, information there, a good wrap up of everything that I've been working on. And uh, so go over there and check those guys out. Um, and or you can click the link below to get an audio uh, version from their website. OK, so as I mentioned, uh, the hailstorm in Guadalajara uh, would a, would, is a great example of a modern day analog of what it would have been like 12,800 years ago after a comet fragment uh, slammed into the lower tide ice sheet at the location that we now call Saginaw Bay. Uh, now, keep in mind that if once this happened, it's just sent a barrage of, of ice chunks. And when I say chunks, I'm talking about stadium sized chunks of ice up into the air and they came crashing back down. Um, now, if the ground was unconsolidated sediment where they came crashing back down, we likely formed Carolina Bays. Uh, if the ground was too hard, uh, it likely crushed and, and you know smashed into the ground uh, and we would have just been left with a mess of ice up to you know a, a meter or two thick of just crushed glacial ice um, everywhere within 900 miles of Saginaw Bay you know a complete radius of 900 miles or 1500 kilometers from Saginaw Bay would have just been completely covered in crushed glacial glacial ice and you know remember Antonio Zamora this is where he has taken it um, I, I agree with him but I'm coming at it from the opposite direction you know I'm looking at what happened after the event we're looking at uh, where did that water go you know if the if the East Coast was completely covered in this ice it had to have melted and it had to have started to run off and that's where I've been looking at it uh, or how I've been looking at it so so using things like lidar we've been able to to you know really focus on the the fluvial geomorphology of the East Coast, um, and as well as, like I mentioned before, in Nebraska rainwater basins over there has the same same terrain and the same uh, conditions going on over there. But that water had to have run ran off, and uh, it would have created these, uh, you know, very narrow uh, river channels, very straight river channels, uh, and it would have been a very short event and then done. And uh, now the only time that these river channels fill up with, with any amount of water is during an extreme rain event, like a like a hurricane or something like that. Um, but they they were formed, and they were formed after all of these Carolina bays uh, were formed. And so we should be able to use that again, that law of superposition, and start tying things together. Uh, but that's how I'm taking it. We're looking at drainage basins and and all kinds of stuff as an after effect of this, you know, Laurentide ice sheet event that happened 12,800 years ago. Now, in Guadalajara, like I mentioned, this is a localized area. This is a very small area, uh, and it, it came from a localized storm system, a very large storm system, but it dumped a bunch of ice uh, in, in, you know, as hail, and this hail accumulated. But you can see in these images here, this is what the entire 
uh, or a very good large portion of North America would have looked like. You know, we had just crushed ice. Obviously, we wouldn't have cars and buildings and things like that 12,800 years ago. But um, this is a tremendous amount of ice, you know, in the middle of central Mexico, which is not an area that you would expect to see something like this. Uh, it looks very glacial-like. Uh, and this is, again, what it would have looked like and, and the condi- how the conditions would have been up over a uh, much greater area um, after a YD impact event. So, so and, and again, what I want to focus on is the flooding event that happened after that. So I just want to show this quick video, uh, and we can talk about it as it's playing, um, of the flooding that was occurring you know, during and after this hailstorm. Uh, where you can see this ice and water were mixing together, very fluvial, it's flowing freely, and these, this ice would have been extremely, um, it, it would have made, you know, the scouring motion just, uh, I mean, look at this, it's just swirling around. Um, that's, that's, you know, almost completely covering this first floor of, of these buildings here. Uh, and the scouring motion, the, the erosion that would be taking place on, on ground, uh, would have would just be tremendous. Because, I mean, that's just that's, what a mess. Um, and again, keep in mind this is a, a localized storm event. This 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 is how everything on the entire East Coast, central part of the United States, would have been like after after an event like this. Uh, look at that! All that ice just flowing freely, moving cars. Every you know, if, if those look you know they they look like icebergs. They, they are icebergs um, in the middle of Mexico. And so, you know, this is, again, I just wanted to show you guys this. This is a great example of, of uh, what it would have looked like. Um, and, and we can use this, again, as a modern day analog of, of the events that would have taken place 12,800 years ago. Uh, and so I wanted to bring that to your attention. Like I said, Antonio Zamora contacted me uh, and you know, while he's out gallivanting around Mexico, uh, he wanted to make sure that something, somebody, um, you know, brought this to everybody's attention. So I appreciate him for, uh, for emailing me and, 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 um, getting the ball rolling on this. And, uh, so guys, I, I hope you, uh, you're, you're seeing the picture, you're seeing the bigger picture here, uh, and connecting the dots. And, um, I appreciate you guys watching and we'll catch you next time. Bye.